So I've got my top type setting almost done. I just need a dash. What can I do for the dash to kind of keep it within the typefaces that I'm using and modifying? Well, I can take this, this I, because Defont, it didn't come with a dash. That's not usually one of the ones they upload for, for just the samples. So I'm going to duplicate the, uh, the I from this one. and then just use my usual compositing tricks, right? Option Command T to free transform. And I'm gonna squish it, holding down Shift, rotate it, maybe hit Return and then transform it again. Maybe even warp it, just stretch it out a little bit. There we go, and then Move it into place, set it on top, and multiply. Ah, keep doing that option command T. And this is why I really like doing text blocking sketches because you can kind of get a sense of the movement that you want from the type just from how you sketched it. It's kind of the gesture of your sketch. And then you can match that with your type setting. Okay, so I feel, maybe I'll tilt that a little bit. I feel pretty good about the top, how I've typesetted the top. The problem is, it's all very low res, right? So we need to turn that into a really high quality vector type. And I'll show you how. But I've got to be as confident and as happy with how I did the bottom. So this is why I showed you that SNL sketch of Papyrus. If you don't modify the typeface at all, it's mostly because you're just using what's called default spacing. The spacing between the letters is called the kerning, and you want to control all of that. When you use a type tool in a program, and you can do it within, yeah, I'll just use this one. There's a lot of typefaces built in for you to use within PhotoP. Let's make it a whole lot bigger. And it's like a word processing program, right? So when you do that, you can control the kerning just by putting spaces between and then controlling the size of the space, right? Like that. But also, at least in programs like Photoshop, if you hold down Option and then use your arrow keys, you can also control the kerning that way. So these programs are built in for, for typesetting. I can't do that here because these are just pixels, right? So with these pixels, what do I need to do? I need to individually select each letter and then move them where I want them. And as long as I'm on the right layer, that will work. You get to the right layer. There we go. But they will need to be rasterized to do that. So I can also duplicate from them, but I can also just rasterize and do it directly. And then I can transform each letter form individually. and I can place them. I want to fit the I and the R behind the tail. And I think I want to make the G a little bit bigger than the others. And it's interesting that the G is going to kind of echo the shape of the tail. So now I'm going to lasso the I. And this is going to be the trickiest one to figure out. So I free transform it. I might want to squeeze it a little bit smaller. Maybe even wider. It's going to go behind the tail. Maybe warp it. Tug it in different ways, but it needs to be readable.
So maybe a lowercase i is the way to go. Same thing with the r. We are not changing the typeface, we are modifying the typeface. And then we are trying to pay attention to type setting. With the typeface. And then with the L. Lasso a little bit less of it. Doesn't overlap my R. So warp is a great option for this. So you can really kind of control the momentum and angle of every part of the letter form. And just kind of move it into place. And then I need an exclamation mark. And at this point, I've used these typefaces enough. I can just kind of make my own. I don't need to go back to Defont and try to find something that has an exclamation mark, which can be hard to find. So instead, I just duplicate. And I'll use the dash. Duplicate that, bring it down, and transform it. And then same thing with, with a lowercase i, maybe playing with that. I can duplicate it and see if maybe that's something I want to play with where that would go behind the tail. So how can I check that? See what it looks like behind the illustration. I go back to my background layer. I use my magic wand. All these compositing skills. I'm going to save my work quickly. Make sure it's assignment six, not overwriting assignment five. And I'm going to use my magic wand on my background layer. Contiguous. Select all the white space around my illustration. Right? Then say select inverse and then duplicate, command J, and then move that up above. There we go. And then I'll delete my text blocking that got flattened in. You can see how much a little color really helps. Basically, I'm just checking the readability of girl when it's tucked behind my illustration. And then I think, yeah, that's readable enough. I like it. But I feel like there's too much space now on the Gorgon part. So let's fix that, right? I'm going to kind of clean all this up, make sure I know where everything is. Come on, there it is. OK, so that's what I have so far. But I want to try to bring all this text down. So what's an easy way to do that? If I turn off my background and I turn off my spot illustration, I can merge certain layers together. Right. Oh, I merged a little more than I wanted, but I can merge all of these together. And then set all of that on multiply. And now 
I can just select the top here, duplicate it, or even better yet, just to save me some, I can hit Command X, cut it, and then paste it, Command V, so it goes onto another layer, right? And then on that new layer, I can play with moving that down a little bit closer, or even just transforming the whole thing, maybe tilting it a little bit like that, maybe squeezing it, because now it's fully rasterized. Maybe warping it, now as a whole, make that G even more pronounced. Yeah. And then I'm just thinking, I want to make that G even a little bit wider and bigger. So I'm just going to free transform that on its own. Okay, and now I'm really, really close. Just going to warp it. I might make that O just a little bit bigger too. So just a lot of compositing and pasting. Not quite that big. <laughs> All right, so once you're happy with it, this is your type setting. This is all in low resolution. Now I turn off, I do it on a white background. I turn off the background and I save it, export it just as a JPEG. It's as a high resolution JPEG and I'm gonna call it a test file in front of the usual name. Now, if you remember, assignment five, in the directions for it, I gave you an option for how to vectorize your line art. And I'm gonna copy that site, which is AI Vectorizer. If you don't wanna use Adobe Illustrator, here is a freeware version that, that works pretty well, that I'm is new to me, but I'm learning to use it. And it's right at the end of that project. So I'm going to copy all this. I'm going to put it into my assignment six directions as well. right here. Because that's good information. Okay, so now with this test file of my type, you can think of it as a logo design, you can think of it as, as line art, right? It's raster, and the raster can be incredibly blurry, but I want to turn that into a vector. And so I have two kind of options that are good options. One is I can use Adobe Illustrator to do that, which is a program that's not freeware. Right? I can open it up in Adobe Illustrator, and I can image trace it. I'm going to go through those steps really quickly because a lot of you are enjoying using the Adobe products. I'll turn off all this stuff so you can see what it comes in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink it with my large selection tool at the top there so that